Hello everyone, I'm Gunny on what may be the very last day of the year for me at the range that is very overcast. But today we have the Type 81 SR, one of the very few toys that the Americans cannot get and we can. Let's give it a quick view, shall we? So pretty obviously this is meant to be a imitation of the SVD Dragonoff. This time it is based on the Type 81 SA, the semi-automatic version of the old Chinese army assault rifle, which ironically the Chinese mil the uh, Chinese civilians sorry do not have access to. And sadly for us, this is also not a 762x54R. This is only a 39, which makes me very very sad. Regarding the SVD desk cards, I should say, with the stock and the handguard, I have to say this is pretty damn cheap. If I put it on the other side, you can see that there is already a few marks that have appeared on the uh, handguard. That's purely from me manipulating the rifle and sometimes rubbing a piece of metal or something against it. It's uh, really, really cheap wood, and in my opinion, it's not going to live for very long. But it's still uh, I should say, it's still enough of a disguise to fool people from far away. Regarding the magazine, you can pretty obviously see that this is based on the AK-47 with a few extra cuts. If I take my MacPro magazine right there next to it, you can see that the front has had an extra cut, and in the back, you can see also that the follower is sticking out from this wall that has been very roughly cut. The reason for that is, if I insert the magazine, in the empty chamber, obviously. You can see that there is a bolt hold open. This, uh, there is no mag release anywhere on this rifle. The way that it would work is, you obviously remove the empty mag, put a new one in, rack, and you're ready to go again. So, regarding the sights, they are very similar to what you would find on the Type 81 SA, with a couple differences. First, you have the front right there, it is exactly the same with a blade, but on the rear side, it is a little bit different. You can see that on the right side, right there, we have 100, 300, and 400 meter markings, while on the other side, it is 600 and 700 meters. Considering the effective range of 7.62 by 39, you really don't need any more than that. And I seriously doubt anybody is crazy enough to try shooting iron sight that far on an AK. Or maybe nine holes. The other difference that you would find is on the rear sight right there. It is still an AK style with notch and blade, however you have two notches, bottom and top. The way this is working is that the bottom notch is supposed to be used with the right side mark, yeah with the right side markings from uh, 1, 3 and 400, and the top one is supposed to be used for the 6 and 700 mark and uh, 700 meters. I have tried none of these because if you have the cheek rest installed, it is just impossible to squish your face enough to use the sights. It is strictly for using the, uh, the scope. The scope which is, as you can see, pretty offset. Up. And speaking about the scope, let's get on to this one. So when I bought the rifle through Tactical Imports, I also opted to take the scope. It was well, I was expecting essentially to get a Chinese counterfeit, but no, this is apparently a real Russian optic with all of the certificates and origin papers. And this is a fix four times. It comes with the eye cup, but I absolutely hate these, so I don't use it. It is adjusted like every single Russian optic of this time, meaning you have to actually unscrew these two screws instead of rotating the turret, and you're going to be rotating only the top until you reach the correct, uh, the correct position on target. Once it is done, you put the screws back in and you will be using the normal clicks. It is very important to note that these clicks, they are not supposed to be, uh, <laughs> they are not supposed to be quarter or even half MOA, no. Each click, according to the manual, corresponds to 25 millimeters, which is almost an entire inch. An inch is uh, 25.4 millimeters. Once it is done, you put your cap back on. You have an AA battery right in there. You just push down and it comes out. I'm not really sure this is supposed to be waterproof or at all, in fact, so, I'm so do not try to submerge it. And you have your on-off switch right there that gives you 
just a little bit of illumination inside of the inside of the scope. Now, regarding the reticule, it is exactly the same thing that you would find in a quote-unquote real SVD. But you have to remember that this is an old uh, it's an old school Russian optic, which means that whenever you're going to be making any kind of adjustment, the reticule is going to be moving inside of the tube, which can be a bit disorienting. In order to remove it, it is well, it is a PSO, so you would use this latch. I've already loosened it because it's pretty hard. In order to slide it back, and that's how you remove it. Now with the optics off, you can see that we have the optics rail right there, and from the name, Hiron, Ar Hiron Arms MFG, it is not part of the rifle itself. This is another accessory that you can buy through Tactical Import. It's on the same product page as the Type 81 SR. That's one of the options. The problem with this rail, however, is that this is only screwed in. You can see that there is a screw right there, and there is another one hidden at about the middle point. And the screws are right there, and they're also used as a pivot point for the trigger and the hammer. The issue that there is with this system is potentially the same one that you saw in my review of the WK-180C, that you are applying essentially shearing force directly onto threads. I've torqued them down quite a bit, so the rail is not moving whatsoever, but we are putting quite a bit of weight and a relatively expensive piece of glass. This is granted only $500, Leaf, but this is still something that I would like to not see fall off and break. So I think one of the things that might do in the future is bring it to the armorer and ask him to just weld the rail onto the receiver in order to make sure that this is never going to go away. Now for the part that I'm guessing many of you were waiting, up, gutting the rifle. So it works exactly like an AK-47 in the sense that you push to the back like so until the, the top cover comes off, maybe, possibly, there we go. Then you have your recoil spring right there on tracks that you can remove, like so, and then the bolt carrier comes off. In my case, the rifle is pretty damn stiff, okay, but it did it not too badly. And you see now why I don't I don't understand why people say this is like an SKS. Granted, it has a short stroke piston right there. However, this is very, very clearly an AK system with your two locking logs and a guide on the top. And your firing your uh, firing pin right in the back. This is really just like an AK in all reality. You have a little bit more dwell time in order for the rifle to get, a for the pressure to drop a little bit more. You can see that there is already a little bit of wear on this system. I have not cleaned it or uh, done anything to it yet. But you can see that this is very much an AK in a considerably longer bolt carrier. Put it back together, obviously. It is the same in opposite direction. Oops. Get back in there, and there we go. Now, let's look inside of the lower receiver. As you can see, this does not look like an AK-47 at all, beside the front one, obviously. So you have the hammer right there, which honestly resembles more an AR-15 than an AK-47. You're going to have this, uh, say, essentially this volume or this extrusion on the side of the hammer that's going to do most of the work. You have your trigger right there, with this part interacting with this, uh, this peg essentially, and this right here is your disconnector, which works exactly like an AR-15. So let's imagine that the trigger was pressed, like so. The hammer would go back and back and back and back, lock on the disconnector, and when you release it, now it is locked on the trigger, just like an AR-15. I keep talking about AR-15, but like I said, the shapes are very, very similar. I don't know why people say that this is, this looks more like uh, like an SKS than an AK-47 because really it's just a weird hybrid. Kind of cool. And obviously in the back, this is a flat spring that powers, well, that powers, that allows you essentially to lock the safety in one position, safe and fire.
For reassembly, that's pretty much like an AK-47. However, uh, you just take your port carrier, you match the holes right there on each side, like so, maybe, possibly. Thank you. You drive it home. You put the retort spring, which again is not actually the same as an AK-47. This one is just this one is a, a collapsing model, a telescopic model, I should say. You put, you put that little bugger back into its tracks. It's not easy to do while letting you see what I'm doing. There we go. Then you have the top cover, which I find is easier to put in if you follow the Israeli me method. So you put it like so, but you see the bottom is not sticking out. Just track it and you're done. Well, after a full day of being completely hidden, the sun has finally decided to grace us with his presence, to salute the glorious rifle of the ever so glorious Republic of very democratic China. So what can I say about this rifle? Well, it is fun. I will give it that. And this is probably the closest thing that we're going to get for a while to a, to a real SVD Dragunov. It is, well, it is built a bit cheap, however. Very surprising from China, I know. The wood is, uh, well, let me put it like this. I've had airsoft rifles with better wood than that. The other, the other issue that I have is, you know, the optics rail is potentially going to shear off at some point. But the worst part about this rifle is the trigger. The problem with it is you're going to have a little bit of take up. It honestly feels a little bit like a two stage trigger. Then you have this very heavy, spongy uh, system yeah it's probably about eh, nine or ten pounds essentially of sponge where you cannot discern any no where you cannot notice any real war before the gun breaks I literally cannot feel anything it's a constant sponge essentially but you have to Essentially, you have to train yourself around the sponginess to know when the rifle is going to break, which has caused me a few issues during my uh, during my zeroing of the scope or doing some uh, accuracy test. I fed it some hutters, some Winchester, some uh, of its national food, Noring comb, but don't use that crap, it's really, really bad. I've also fed it some Bernal that did better than the Noring comb, and well, you can get two MOA out of this rifle, or even a little bit less. On the Hotus, I didn't have any. Uh, I didn't really have good ammo or really match ammo, I would say. Uh, but I did do a one and a half MOA. That was my uh, my record with this one. Please note, I have not shot it very much, and like I said, crap trigger. In total, right now, I think I have shot uh, about a hundred and. 40 rounds, I think, because I have 10 left in this. Uh, the trigger is a real issue because, like I said, you cannot feel when it's going to break. So you tend to flinch quite a bit because you think the rifle is about to fire uh, and then nothing, you have to go a millimeter more or something like that. It's a real shame because this is a fun rifle and you can actually use it for hunting because 762 by 39 so who is this rifle made for? Well, the obvious first crowd is artists like me who really want to have an SVD and being told that they can't, so SVD at home. The second category, I would say, is hunters, because 7.62x39, you're allowed to actually hunt with it, and I know plenty of people use uh, SKSs to do that. You can buy a Tapco chassis or yeah, Tapco chassis or something like that to modernize the SKS, but in my opinion, this is probably just as good or better. Again, just my own uh, little opinion. Uh, in terms of historical value, well, this has absolutely none because this was made specifically for the aforementioned artists in Canada who wanted an SVD. This has never been used by uh, anybody in the world. And uh, yeah, I think that's actually all of the possible categories. Hunter, two gun, artists. So, if you want to see more of this little guy in the future, or just me spreading my autism on the internet, you can comment, subscribe, leave a like, hit the notification bell. I have all of my links in the description below, and I'll see you 
on the next one. Salut, bonsoir